Poker Class is sponsored by CollectorsCash.com and they now have Dark Explorers in stock at incredible prices. Are you looking for that last card to complete your deck or looking to boost your collection in any set of the game, then Collectors Cash is where you need to be. They stock all of your boxes, tins and singles of Pokemon and any other card game for that matter at very competitive prices. So make sure you visit www.collectorscash.com after the show. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 25 of Poker Class and today we're really really close to UK and US nationals so I thought it'd be a really good time to go over our Spring Battle Roads results for 2012. So what I'm going to be giving you is a few interesting decks that have been doing well, what's been doing well, what the top three decks are along with some lists for all three. So let's get straight to it. So our spring battle roads for this season have pretty much finished with just nationals and worlds ready and waiting for us to compete in, some of you having already completed your nationals already, the results for which I'll get to in a bit. But first off, let's take a look at a list of which decks have won battle roads across the world as of today and it looks a little something like this. We actually have a really nice collection of results here from over 140 Battle Roads events, which should give us an amazing idea as to what the metagame should look like before the biggest tournaments of the year. What's even more amazing is the amount of times the top deck has won, which counts for almost half the Battle Roads, and who has to cover this spot than Darkrai. That's right, Darkrai has won almost 70 Battle Roads, the exact amount being 68, which is an incredible amount and really has proven itself as a solid contender in this new format we've arrived in. Everyone knew Darkrai was good, but did we think it was this good? I'm not too sure, but let's quickly take a look at the breakdown of variants of Darkrai and see which has been doing the best so far. As you can see, Darkrai paired with Tornado CX has won 42 times towards Darkrai's massive win number, and I would say that this is because of a combination of being extremely fast and also having that coverage against fighting types that has been causing trouble for Darkrai, but not completely taking it over because of the resistance that Tornadus delivers. Tornadus also takes full advantage of being able to use completely colourless energy and being able to hit for 30 or 60 damage on the very first turn with just a double colourless, making it a force to be reckoned with straight from the get-go. The second place Darkrai deck has specifically teched for the mirror match and Zekrom match too by including a Terrakion tech and altering the build to make use of Retaliate to take cheap double prizes whenever they get the chance. This build has slowly become a lot more popular during Darkrai's dominance over the first week of tournaments and made even more popular by Norwegian Nationals Top 2 both being exactly the same deck list of this very deck. Just to give you an idea of how to start building this type of deck, Benjamin Berins, the second place finisher of that very tournament this year, has given me his Pokemon line for his particular list to help out those of you who want to try it out yourselves. And it's actually pretty standard, but notable things are 3 Shaman from Unleashed, which is quite a heavy count for a Darkrai based deck, but since you need to get energy onto Terrakion efficiently during the game, this seems to be the best way to go about it, and having 4 Darkrai also hasn't been the norm when it comes to building Darkrai. So this list actually focuses on Darkrai being the main attacker, rather than having a split between both that and Tornado CX, while having Terrakion in there to pick up the pieces later on in the mirror match. It's also worth noting that I would advise you to put 2 fighting energy and an energy switch or 2 to keep the Terrakions as consistent as it possibly can since having the energy search in the discard pile will provide you with a way to fish out the fighting energy when you have junk arm at your disposal at the right time in the game. Other than that you could probably easily fill the rest of your list in yourself since most lists have become pretty standard now but one more variant of Darkrai I will mention is the one that has finished 3rd in the most winning Darkrai variants and it involves Sableye. Now Sableye hasn't been that competitive since last format but it has now returned in a very different way in a combination with Crushing Hammer and Lost Remover. This deck was first talked about when Issa of the deck out won his nationals with the very deck and from then on it's become a very popular version of the deck winning a lot in the latter stages of battle roads. Here is the list Issa provided in his blog at thedeckout.com and is a very nice place to start building your own version of the deck or taking a list to test against before your nationals. The main idea of the deck is not to go too aggressive with Darkrai, but deny your opponent's shield of energy drops in the early game while you get your own Darkrai set up with the combination of Crushing Hammer, Loss Remover and Sableye's Junk Hunt attack. For Junk Hunt, for those of you that aren't familiar with the card, allows you to take two items from your discard pile and simply put them into your hand. 
The main strategy is to use Junk Hunt with your energy denial trainers, but it can also help to grab back dark patches and random receivers to keep up with energy attachments and general consistency. His other attack isn't too bad either. So overall, this deck plays on energy denial, with Darkrai sweeping up later on, and Tornado CX is thrown in there to help cover those pesky fighting types as a tech rather than a main attacker, as you may notice the lack of double colorless energy in the list. And that's all I'm going to really cover for Darkrai variants at the moment, as I'm sure you know a lot about them already, but I just wanted to highlight the two main ways to run Darkrai, as there are so many at the moment. In second and third place for most winning decks are the classics that I talked about in last week's episode, Zekrom Electric and Celebi Mewtwo Tornadus. Zekrom has taken more than double the wins CMT has, but that could have something to do with having a dominance over Tornadus EX, half of the attacking force of both CMT and Darkrai Tornadus, giving it two free prizes with a one prize attacker. An Eviolited Zekrom really does deal trouble to a lot of decks out there, since it can take at least one hit in most cases and only give up the one prize while doing so, so it's still proving to be a deck to be reckoned with. And CMT is still there as it still has the donking capabilities with both versions of Tornadus, and the fact that a lot of players have dropped their Mewtwo counts to one really allows the deck with two or even three copies of Mewtwo to dominate. By having more Mewtwo's than your opponent, you can really catch them off guard with a complete Mewtwo sweep while their only one has been dealt with already. Another thing to note is that half of the CMT decks that have won have including Terrakion, a tech obviously for both Darkrai and Zekrom Eels matchups. CMT is arguably the easiest deck to slip Terrakion into since the energy attachments are a little bit more flexible and you need to have less in your hand for it to work, but good old CMT without Terrakion is still as consistent as ever and ready to take on the new players like Darkrai for a nice amount of Battle Roads wins. If you do want some more information on these decks, then please check out episode 74 of Poker Class at the end of the show to find out more about lists and techs of all versions of both decks. And the fourth most winning deck completely sprung out of nowhere in the first week by winning a single Battle Roads and then gained a lot of popularity to make it to a total of 7 wins at the moment, and that is Clean Clang with EX Techs. This deck is very new to the meta even though the card has been around for a while already, but since Reshiram had a dominant hold over the previous meta game and is almost non-existent now, Kling Klang has a small window to shine. For those of you who don't know how Kling Klang works, it's all about prize denial by using Kling Klang's ability shift gear to move metal energy freely around your side of the field in combination with max potion to heal the damage, move the energy back and start attacking from fresh. Since you are now using a toolbox of EX attackers to power up, you can use both Rainbow and Prism Energy to cover all types, whilst being able to move it around still with Kling Kang's ability, and your opponent is going to have a tough time one-shotting all these high HP EXs as you heal off softer blows with high counts of Max Potion. Here's a quick list I put together and should give you a good basis to build from or test against if you don't know how to approach the matchup. So the selection of EXs in this list are Darkrai, Purim, Mewtwo and Groudon, which I feel should be enough to send to the active position to take advantage of which deck you are playing against. Darkrai is a key player because of the free retreat it gives to all your Pokemon because of your multi-type energy and can also clean up nicely later on too. Kurum EX is there for a little bit of energy denial and extra type coverage, Mewtwo to avoid Mewtwo sweeps and set up your own, and Groudon to take down those pesky fighting weak players in the format. If you feel that your meta game has a sway to either specifically fighting weak decks like Darkrai and Zeals or something else, then definitely think about taking out certain EXs to put more copies of others in, like Groudon using this example. All the EXs have powerful attacks and high HP, which fills the role of being an effective attacker in this deck. Definitely do test against this though, as it will take you by surprise when facing it in a large tournament, and don't underestimate it. If you also want to take a look at a match I played recently against the deck, then click the link at the end of the show to watch that. Back to the results of our Spring Battle Road season, and I just want to touch upon three decks that really caught my eye when looking at this list. Entei, Lugia Legend, and Sork Tornadus, all with a decent win count, apart from Lugia winning just the one. Entei is a deck I have tested since it has been floating around online for a while and wanted to stay prepared against everything and has a similar strategy to any quad based deck, tanking and hitting for massive damage. The only difference between using 4 Entei is it has its built in energy acceleration. Entei's Ground Flame for 2 fire and a colourless does 90 damage and then allows you to attach a fire energy from your discard to one of your bench Pokemon, which will always be an Entei. Pair this with cards such as Moomoo Moo Milk, Experience Share, Eviolite, Potion and Max Potion and you have a fairly sturdy and pretty cheap deck that actually has a decent Darkrai matchup. Since Darkrai will only be hitting for 110 maximum and 30 on the bench, your combo of Moomoo Moo Milk and Potion will throw off their maths while you two hit co all of their attackers. The deck is actually quite easy to build, so do give it a go. 
Lugia Legends is actually a deck I've seen before since I played against a variant of it with Don Fan when Cities were here, and what it does is pretty much thrive on being able to knock out every EX in the format with one attack, while only giving up one prize itself. By using cards like Legend Box paired with its Ocean Grow Poker Power, you can get Lugia Legend fully powered up in one turn, of course with a bit of luck thrown in there too. However, when this does get set up, the attack deals 200 damage. This is enough to KO anything at the top of the competitive format right now, and take two prizes for doing so on an EX. This Pokemon's been paired with Terrakion to make turn 1 land crushes possible, when paired with Shaman from Unleashed 2, so watch out for this gnarly deck cropping up somewhere in your next tournaments. And finally, I just want to take a quick look at Sork Tornadus, which has won a total of 3 battle roads, a pretty decent number for an unheard of deck. Tornadus is a card we all know about, but Sork, the one from black and white, hasn't been seen whatsoever, and here it is. Unimpressive, you must agree, but with an attack that does 20 for 1 energy, and 40 for 2, doubled when against fighting weak Pokemon, and you have a fairly sturdy cheap attacker. I've also read that the deck run 4 plus powers, just to get big 2 hit KOs on Darkrai, and cheap KOs against Zekrom Eels, and just shows how any fighting type can really take full advantage of the meta being so dominant with fighting weak Pokemon right now. An interesting deck that may be fun to try out if you have any battle roads left. And that is pretty much all I have time for today, but I hope I've shone some light on what to expect if you have any battle roads left coming up, and gives a good outlook on for any nationals that are left too, including the UK and the US. I wish you all good luck at tournaments you attend next week, and we'll be back next Saturday with another episode of Poker Class to keep you as prepared as possible for all the tournaments left in the 2012 season. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking in the top left hand corner of the video in a second to keep up to date with all my latest uploads between Poker Class episodes. Please leave a like and comment in the comment section below as always and I'll do my best to reply to them all. Thank you all for watching and have a great weekend.